All right, welcome to our final video for the week. In this video here, we're gonna introduce arrays. And um, while arrays are, are one of the first data structures that you get introduced to and you start using in programming, um, they look a little different when you start looking at them in assembly and working with them in assembly. And hopefully you got some exposure to that in your assembly course. If you didn't though, uh, this is intended to hopefully introduce and, and partially as a review. Um, it's important to be able to recognize when an array is being used. And there are kind of two primary places that you're going to recognize that. One is in those local variables. So when you're looking at the way that IDA is identifying locals for us and the addresses, the offices that are being used, you can identify arrays that way. And then also when they're being used inside of the program as well. And we'll take a look at both of those here. So before we get into that here, just a quick refresher on local variables. Here you can see, again, in any function, what Ida is going to do is it's going to create these dummy variables for you. We talked about those in the last video. Um, arguments, positive offsets, and local variables, negative offsets, because these are based off of EBP. And so uh, we think about that as an address, and in order to get those arguments, um, those variables are, are above that. They're at a higher address. Locals are at a lower address. They're below that. Right, and here's just a little diagram to help with that. So we have our standard prolog. Um, we push EBP onto the stack. So once this function is called, before the prolog, we have the return address on the stack. And our stack pointer is, is pointing right here. Then we push EBP. That pushes that value onto the stack. Um, and then increments or increases where the stack is pointing to ESP. We then move ESP into EBP. So at that point, EBP is pointing right here. Right, so you can see that on this on this diagram that I'm using to describe the stack. Okay, higher addresses are above, lower addresses are below. So EBP plus, all right, plus four would give us the return address. We generally don't want to reference that directly. Plus eight gives us the first argument. Minus four gives us var four. Minus eight gives us var eight. Minus zero C gives us var C and so forth. So that's how you're you're mapping these local variables, these dummy names that Ida is giving you to the actual layout on the stack. Okay, how about arrays? So typically we use arrays to aggregate or to bring you know, data that's related into a single variable. And so we have that variable that we can store multiple elements of data with. And we generally reference that data by you know, the name of the variable and then those you know, parentheses or brackets, I'm sorry, brackets you know, with an index number. And what that essentially is doing is it's dereferencing that area of memory in order to give you the value that's stored there. When, is, when arrays are created in memory, it's typically a contiguous block of addresses. You know, an array of size 10, maybe it's integers, so each element would be four bytes, you're gonna have addresses that increment by four. Right? Zero, let's say the address is zero, zero, first element. Next one will be zero, four for the, for the second element. Zero, eight for the third and so forth. Right? So you have a series of addresses in order to reference those specific elements. So what we're looking for in assembly now and in, in using IDA is that we're using a base address plus offsets. And that's how we're calculating the different elements in that actual array. So we can begin with a very basic example. You can see here in this code, we have our main method. There are two local variables, an i and an integer array of size 5. And then there's a for loop. And all this loop is going to do is it's going to access each element of the array and assign it the value of i. Now, we can think about how big does our stack need to be inside of this function. And if you take <clears throat> i is 4 bytes, okay, so 4, and then we want to add to that, each element of this array is an integer. So each element is going to be 4 bytes in size. We have 5 elements. So 4 times 20, or I'm sorry, 4 times 5 is 20. So we can add to that 20 bytes. Okay, that was in base 10, so we can convert that over to base 16, and we can see that we need at least 18 bytes, so 18 hex, in order to allocate enough space in the stack for these locals. Okay, in this next screen capture or slide, what you'll see right up here is sub ESP1C hex. Alright, so if we add to the number that we originally calculated another four bytes, there's our answer. Okay. So why is there an extra four bytes? Well, it's because of the security cookie. And I opted to push that off until next week. So we'll talk about that next week, even though we've been seeing it over and over and over again in our programs. Right? So the stack's just a little bit larger because of that. Here you can see the basic structures. Hopefully you can identify the fact that there's a loop here. Right? We can see that using the arrows. We can see that this first block is for our comparison. So var 1c, we move 0 into 1c. If you go back and look at 
this loop, you can see that i is initialized to 0. So 1c is our counter i. 1c is compared to 5, so that helps us determine our comparison. Right? We jump, if it's greater than or equal, to this location, 401034, which is the end of our function. Otherwise, this is the body of our loop, and then this is where we do the increment. So bar 1c, or i, gets moved into eax, we add 1 to eax, we move eax back into i. Loop around, and then we do the comparison again. <clears throat> okay, so var 18 then is our array. And let's go to the next slide here. Um, what you can see is when we look at these variables, okay, we can see we have var 4 minus 4, var 18 minus 18, var 1c minus 1c hex. And so that is an indication that one of those, that var 18 minus 18, is actually an array. Let's look at the difference. Right? Something's pointing specifically to the offset on the stack at minus 18, so EVP minus 18, EVP minus 1C. Uh, the difference between those two, so let's take 1C and subtract 4, we have 18. Right? So, var 1C is likely pointing to an integer or a pointer or something that is only 4 bytes, 4 bytes in size. Okay? What is the difference between 18 and 4? Well, let's subtract that. 18 hex minus 4, 14 hex, convert that to base 10, and you can see it's 20. So the difference from this address, I'm sorry, that offset, minus 18 to minus 4, is 20 bytes. So, right, so that way we've identified that minus 18, or var 18 in our code, is the actual array, because there's enough space for the array that we're using. Now, Arrays aren't always going to be this straightforward, and you'll see examples throughout the course that uh, kind of highlight that. Um, here you can also see, this is just an example C program, it doesn't exactly match up the disassembly that we're looking at, uh, but you can see, just this, this highlights the sequential nature of those addresses. Right? So C4, C8, CC, D0, D4. Right? This array has an element size of 4 bytes, so each address refers to 4 bytes of memory. So C4, next address, C8, next address CC, next address D0, D4, and so forth, okay? All right, so let's look at how we calculate the offset. So here you can see is the snippet from inside of that loop. And we have var 1C, which we know is our counter, so that's I, being moved into ECX and EDX. Um, we're gonna use that kind of in two locations here as far as how we're calculating that array, that offset into that array. So we can see that EDX is going to be moved into that location because the whole purpose of all of this is to calculate a location and ECX is used as part of that calculation. So let's break it down. Okay, EBP is the base of, not the function, sorry, it's the base of the array. Well, no, it's the, the base, yeah, it is the base of the function. I'm sorry, that's right. Base of the function, right, it's our stack frame. Um, we have var 18. So that's minus 18, that gives us the base of the array. Okay, so EBP plus var 18 gives us the base of the array. This ECX times four then is what's used to calculate the offset. ECX just happens to be the counter variable. We're using the value from that counter variable. So in this case, it's gonna be zero, one, two, three, and four. So four, four is the size of each element of that array. We declared an integer array. Each element in that integer array is gonna be four bytes. So, 0 times 4 is 0, right? So EBP plus 0 plus var 18, which is minus 18, gives us the first element of the array. Next time through the loop, ECX is going to be 1. EBP plus ECX times 4, so 1 times 4 is 4, plus var 18, so minus 18, that's going to add 4 to that base address. That's going to take us one address higher, that's going to take us to the next element. So that's the next element in the array. So each time through the loop, ECX is 2, it's 3, it's 4. That gives us values 0, 4, 8, C, 1, 0, and so forth. Right? Each element, because the element size is 4, this calculates or helps us calculate that next offset, that next element. Okay, so here's a diagram. Hopefully it's not too busy, but uh, it will hopefully will convey what we're talking about here. Okay, so I've been using the same stack diagram. You see we have addresses going from higher to lower. This is our stack frame. We have information I've just kind of crowded up here along the top. We have arguments, we have the return address, we have old EVP, we have the stack cookie. 
What's important to note here, and what I want to highlight is EBP, let's say that EBP has this as an address, right, 32 bits, so it's an, a 4 byte address. Our array, which is EBP minus 18, so if we take this address and we subtract 18 from it, we get this address right here, 4010, no, I'm sorry, 401000, right, so that's the base address for our array. That represents array at index 0. Okay, um, each element then, we just add 4. So 401000, 401004, 401008, C10, right? We add 4 more for the stack cookie, 1, 4. 4 more, we're back to where e EBP is pointing, which is 1, 8, which is where I came up with that address. Okay, this is then the calculation that's done. So each time through the loop, this is what's happening. So var 1C is I. It's our counter. First time through the loop, I is initialized to 0. So EBP plus 0 times 4 minus 18 equals this address. And I can pull up the calculator. We can let's see if I can find a place that's not quite in the way. All right, so we can put in that address. We can put in 401018. Okay, that's where EBP is pointing. We can subtract 18 hex from that. Okay, 401000. That's what I said our, our array, the base of our array is. All right, first time through, EBP. Oh, sorry about that, I'm not sure what happened. First time through, 0 times 4 is 0. Right? So that just gives us the base of the array. Next time through, we have EBP plus 1 times 4 plus a negative 18 hex. 1 times 4 is 4. Right? So we can take that same base address, 401018. We can subtract 18 hex from it if we want whatever order we want to do, we can see that's the base of the array, but now we have to add 4. 401004, right? That's the next element of the array. Okay, that just continues. Remember, this is ECX. ECX is our counter variable. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. All right, let's just jump up to where EBP is 4, or I'm sorry, var 1C is 4. Okay, 401018, subtract 18 hex, we get the base of the array plus 4 times 4, which is 16. I'm sorry, that's not 16 in hex. Um, oh crap, which one do I do? It's 1, 0 in hex. Ah, I screwed that up. Okay, let's start over. 4, 0, 1, 0, 1, 8, minus 18 hex, plus 1, 0. 401010, right? Last element of the array. 401010. Came up with the 10. Okay, if we want to flip over to base 10, uh, 4 times 4 is 16. All right, we can't represent that number with, with a hex digit, so it's 10. So if uh, f is 15, 10 is would then be the next. Okay, so hopefully this, this helps clarify what's going on here. Uh, I know this gets a little bit abstract. This also will hopefully help clarify what you're seeing here, right? This loop goes through and it's just simply printing the address for each element. Element 0, element 1, element 2, element 3, element 4, and you can see those addresses are simply going up each time. C4 plus 4 is C8, plus 4 is CC, plus 4 is D0, plus 4 is D4, right? So this is how that's being represented, memory addresses and on the stack. This is your telltale that an array is being used. You generally will see this type of a calculation when it's calculating the offset for a specific element of the array. Okay, so now we see something like this. Right? How do we know? What is the size of the element? What is the size of each element in this array? Well, we look at this, EAX times 2. Right? This is what's telling us the size of each element. In this previous example, it was times 4, right? because that controls how much we add to this address. We want to move up in 4. We have, we have um, that much information, four bytes, for each address. All right, well two, this means that each element in this array is two, because each time we use this as, as our, you know, as, as this factor, as, as we multiply by two, our addresses are only gonna increase by two. Zero times two is zero, one times two is two, two times two is four, three times two is six, eight, 10, and so forth, right? So these addresses wouldn't go up by four, they'd go up by two. 0, 0, 0, 0, 2, right? 
that means that we only have two bytes each. And so that's what that's also telling us here, is that we know that this array, we could figure out the size, probably the same size, I don't remember what I did here for this screenshot, um, but we could figure out that each element is two. So it's an array of, likely an array of shorts, because shorts are the most common used type when it comes to, or they're the most commonly used when something is only two bytes in size. Okay, last thing we'll look at here, as you look at some code like this, you can see we're, we're calculating this element of the array, we're moving it into EDX, pushing EDX, pushing an offset, calling printf. Okay, we can look at the offset, percent %s, so we know that we're printing strings. What do we know about this array? Well, we know that it's four bytes wide. So we know that each element is, is four bytes, right? And that's really all we know. In order to determine exactly what it is, we have to use the context of the rest of the instructions. In this case, since we're moving that, moving the data that that element points to into EDX, pushing EDX onto the stack, and eventually calling printf that prints a string, we know that that has to be a pointer to a string. So what we can what we can surmise from that then, the context of all of this, is that this is an array of pointers to strings. Right? But we won't know that for sure just by looking at these these maybe these first two instructions or just this one instruction. We'd have to be able to look at that in the context of this program. Right? And then here is the context of that program. So here you can see that there's an array that's declared. Yeah, it looks like it's var 18. And each element of that array has an address for these strings moved into it. And so what you're seeing here, before we actually get into the loop, is that initialization of that array. Okay, And then those are being pushed on. So again, the point of that was just to show that ECX times 4, that means each element in the array is 4 bytes, doesn't necessarily mean we know exactly what the type is. We oftentimes have to do a little further analysis in order to figure that out. So. That's arrays. Let me know if you have any questions on that. And uh, next week we'll move into stack cookies and some other, uh, some more static advanced stack analysis. So look forward to talking to you then.